Okay, so this is part two of using this simple spawn script to spawn uh, an, an enemy, enemy squad. Um, this part, I'm going to go into a little detail. So here are the requirements and assumptions that I listed here at the beginning. First of all, obviously, we're going to use CSAT units. You could change that, but then you'd need to go down and edit this array here to use different units. I'm not going to go into how to do that now, but uh, that's where you would make the change. I'll explain it more in a minute. I also assumed here that I'm making a 10-man squad. That would be a simple change here. Instead of saying from 1 to 10, you'd say from 1 to 8 or 1 to 20 or whatever. Uh, don't make your squad too big or it'll just get really clunky. Um, and I'm using markers on the map called spawn one for the spawn point. You could change that here to underscore spawn point equals get marker pause my new spawn point or whatever, but you'd put it in quotes here. When you name it on the editor, you wouldn't change the name. For instance, my spawn point here, I could change the name to something like uh, or anything I wanted to would go in there. I'm going to go back to, actually I'll just cancel and leave it the same. Okay. Um, next assumption is the names of the waypoint markers. I've named mine, I've got three and I've named them WP1A, WP1B1, and WP1C. You could add more waypoint markers. We'll get into that. Okay. Um, first line of the script is just to make sure it executes only on the server so you don't have 10 men spawning per player. That gets really ugly with 35 players. Um, trust me. Um, next is a line just to keep my local variables private only to this server in this script. I'm uh, oh, sorry, to this machine in this script. Next, this section defines an array. An array is a list. It's defined by uh, these angle brackets, which are showing up pink. I'm using the editor. Uh, I just blanked out. It's Poseidon 2, but it's a version of uh, Sublime Text 2. Um, and it shows, it has color coding for the SQF syntax. SQF is the language that Arma uses. Um, uh, an array is defined as uh, you give it a name. In this case I've given it the name underscore units inf. Underscore is the way to define a variable as being local. So that'll keep it local rather than being global. Um, units inf equals and then whatever's in the brackets. Separated by commas. So that's my array. So I have, you'll notice I have different types of soldiers here. I have 10 units and I've separated them onto different lines based on their types. So I've got three basic soldiers. The O soldier F is the CSAT base soldier. The O soldier LATF is the light anti-tank uh, guy with the RPG, the Alamute. And here's a medic. So I have one in 10 chance, because I'm going to be picking randomly uh, from this array for each unit. I'm going to randomly pick one of these units. So I have a one in 10 chance of picking a medic, a one in 10 chance of picking a light anti-tank soldier, a one in 10 chance of picking a, a grenade launcher guy, two in 10 chance of picking uh, an automatic rifleman and a 3 in 10 chance of picking uh, a regular soldier, 2 in 10 chance of picking uh, light soldiers, light armor. I can change that. I could copy this guy and paste and increase the chances of regular soldiers spawning and decrease the others by doing that. But I don't want to do that. Um, I could take out, like, I don't want any medics. I'm going to cut out the medics. There we go. That'll show them. Nah, actually, I do want a chance of a medic. 
etc. So I can change that. And I could change it to different types of units. Um, if I looked up the class names, those are called class names, by the way, these things that I'm putting in quotes here, um, for different units for AAF infantry or if I was using other units, whatever. Um, next, I could change the spawn point here, the name of the marker where they're spawning, or I could set it up in a different way, not using a marker if I wanted to. Next, get into the actual uh, spawning. This little loop for x from 1 to 10 do, it's going to randomly pick from units inf, which is my array of uh, possible soldiers to pick, it's going to call this function, this function select random, to randomly pick one of them and define it, define spawnee as that. And then it's going to create a spawnee, whatever that unit, that randomly chosen unit is going to be, at the spawn point and make it part of the squad that I defined right before the loop here as a new east, meaning op4, uh, side group. That's it. It's going to zip through that 10 times and spawn those 10 randomly chosen guys. The last section is it's going to give them waypoints to move on. Um, it's going to give them three waypoints. First one is defined as for this squad, add a waypoint. And the first thing is the position of the waypoint, which is going to be at marker waypoint, sorry, at marker waypoint 1A. The zero is the radius within which it will uh, create that waypoint. I can randomize it like I've done below. I've moved them up to 20 or, yeah, I guess 20 uh, meters if I wanted it to be randomly. But in this case, for the first waypoint, I want it to be exactly in that one place. For the next one, uh, for the second waypoint, I'm saying eh, somewhere within this 20 meter radius circle. Um, I'm give it some randomization. Sometimes you want randomization, sometimes you don't. Um, I've also set the waypoint type for each waypoint. The first two are move. I just want them to move. For the first waypoint, I've said set waypoint formation to diamond, diamond formation. For the second waypoint, I've said set the waypoint behavior to combat. The third waypoint I've set the waypoint type of search and destroy, which means that it will establish, I think, five waypoints randomly around that and patrol around there for a while looking for hostile contacts. And I've set a waypoint timeout, a minimum of 180 seconds, a middle of 240, and a maximum of 300 seconds that it'll perform that. All those things can be changeable. I'll put a link to the BIS wiki where you can look at waypoint types. Uh, in the description below. Anything else there? What else might you want to know? That's basically how this works. So if I wanted to add another waypoint, I copy this, say, paste it down. I'm going to say probably my new waypoint is going to be 1D. I can set the radius to whatever. Let's say I want no radius. Let's say I want to make this a cycle waypoint. Ooh, look at me go. Um, and then I would go on to my map and I would put a new marker down and I'd call it waypoint 1D and I'd put it near my first waypoint A so that it would cycle on these three. Just like that, adding more waypoints. Uh, that's about all there is to it. It's not that complicated once you start practicing and playing with it. Get in, play with stuff, try stuff. If you have questions, post it uh, under this video and I'll try to reply. Good luck.